Welcome to the program today. Mauna Gonzalez here in studio, but I have through Skype a friend and brother all the way from Australia, which is awesome. Uh, Sean O'Rourke, he is a, a gentleman that I got to know recently, and he has a, a very extensive website that is geared towards all things apologetics, uh, defending the faith, and that includes a lot of prophecy. Uh, you absolutely will be blessed. Uh, his website is ithasbeenwritten.com, and we'll certainly give you more information about that. But uh, this is a great opportunity for us to Really, I wanted to question him and talk to him about really how do we approach some of these things in the end times and how do we do it in a way that is that is kind and loving and, and that's his heart and that certainly is my heart, especially with those uh, not only unbelievers who disagree with us all around as it relates to what we're watching um, uh, unfold, but also even within the, the household of faith, other Christians that uh, would disagree with our pre-tribulational perspective and what's the best way to go about it. But anyways, Sean, welcome. Thank you very much. Good to be here. So um, you live in Australia. I would love to hear, um, kind of introduce yourself to our audience a little bit about uh, how you got there, what you've been doing, and really maybe expand a little bit on Again, your very extensive website and some of the categories you discussed there. Well, I was originally raised in Chicago, so I apologize for that accent. And then I moved to California for a little while where I met my Australian wife. Um, she was living there training to do dressage on horses. And we were there for about 10 years and then moved back home. And now we're here. So I have come a long way from home. And my dad was a doctor. My mom was a nurse. And they had started a couple churches, and I had been to church, but, you know, in my 20s, I kind of kind of rebelled, and with my parents, they had a, our family kind of split apart, and I sort of wondered, you know, did you forget about me, God, and I kind of went on my angry path when I was in my 20s, and, you know, God was patient. He worked on my heart. I remember back when my uh, parents, um, they they basically... They were fighting each other, and they were kind of turning, self-destructing on the family. And I said, how do I even know any of this stuff is real? I've never checked it for myself. So, my, you know, I can remember my mom saying, well, if you don't think it's real, go go prove it wrong. See what you got. Hmm. And I, you know, that kind of kind of made me nervous. And I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to make it count. So I really, I kind of dug in, found out where all the other religions started and like anything, if you go back to where they began, you can learn a lot about it. And uh, I had proved the Bible correct to myself. And, you know, that's that's when I was kind of had my anger issues with God. And later on, once all that dropped, some people in my life um, close to me who I cared about, I wanted to share this stuff back with them. And um, that's where my website came from. I realized that there are all these different ended up having seven different sections, you know, like creation, uh, tangible evidence, um, signs and prophecy, end times and salvation. And I, I wanted a, I don't have like the best memory. So I wanted a place where I could access my notes mm. anywhere I went. So I was, you know, I'm going to put this on a website that way, wherever I am, whoever I'm talking to, I can at least call it up so that if anybody like me back when I was searching comes to me and says, hey, can you explain all this stuff? I can say, well, yeah, and if I forget anything, I can just access it has been written. So that's, in a nutshell, where it came from. You have, uh, which again, I appreciate, I appreciate the apologetics, that, you know, the idea of, of, for those watching, in the sense of defending your faith, and you have an archaeology section on there. So kind of expand a little bit on um, how you have it, have it structured. You have the different categories, but you also have different, you have uh, embedded videos and links. Kind of give a little bit more description. As I did my research trying to be ready f with an answer, like we're told to be, um, if I found something that just wowed me, I'd put it on there. Often there's things that I'll see and I'll try to recall it. And, you know, the internet's a big place. And you, if you want to go and try and find that, it's pretty difficult. So I wanted a way that I could just look it up and, um, that's that's where it all came from and you know it's a lot like I put it this way with other people it's a lot like training in martial arts or something you can train slowly but then if you go to practice it um, and somebody like completely defeats you that means you haven't actually learned how to use it well and I want people to uh, to actually be effective when they're talking to other folks and I wanted myself to be effective as well 
So one of the things I saw um, with Sean's website is he, he has a, a new video out, which is uh, maybe it's not new, but it's new to me in that sense. And one of the things that he talks about is he gives a, an overall view of the signs of the end times, which was awesome. And one of the things that he mentioned in here, which I really would love to discuss today, is this idea, are earthquakes increasing? And <clears throat> there have been a variety of perspectives, uh, and even some of the data is really hard to come by sometimes. I mean, we can all go to the U.S. Geological Survey site and see some of the data there. But, you know, not necessarily have it all photographically memorized, but in, in the video, you decided to include um, something on earthquakes. Kind of give us a, just kind of some background of what you found. So, yeah, this is one of the branches that I thought, man, what are people going to, how are they going to come up with something on this one to, like, blame people, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, famines, pestilence, earthquakes, and increased weather patterns are one of those pestilence that we watch for. But then there's these earthquakes. And if you look at a graph, you can just go to USGS and see it yourself. Even on my website, I have a, a video where it just shows a visual representation of the magnitude of the earthquake. Mm -hmm. and and I think it's like 15 minutes long, but it covers many years. And if you watch that video, you really get a sense of how many earthquakes are happening, like a lot more frequently. I've been watching it with my earthquake app here for like probably eight years now. And they do come in like waves. But, you know, I can remember going around asking pregnant women, like, will you describe your birth pains to me so that I can have a better <laughs> idea of what, what to look for? But, um, yeah. I just saw, like, a few weeks ago, they're now saying, oh, yeah, we've noticed that the population increase is the same as earthquake increase. So they're already starting to, like, blame people for the earthquakes somehow. Yeah. yeah. That, that's amazing, too. You know, and I guess for those watching, you know, one of the ideas, and, and you know, prophecy teachers will have different perspectives on this, where, uh, you know, Sean, you mentioned the idea of birth pains. And so some prophecy teachers will say, oh, the birth pains... Uh, you know, fa famine, pestilence, earthquakes, um, all out of Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, that uh, they are, some scholars will say, no, these are only related to the first part, the beginning of the tribulation, the seven-year period, where other prophecy teachers, Arnold Fruchtenbaum is one of them, uh, describe that, no, the birth pains actually begin prior to the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period, and they continue to build up like a woman um, having uh, uh, contractions. They, they will increase in intensity and in frequency. And so one of those is very easy as it relates to the earthquakes. And so, again, some scholars, nope, you're not going to see that. Well, I find it interesting that I have another friend of mine who uh, he has been following and keeping track on his website for about 20 years uh, given a yearly update of the earthquake statistics from the USGS, usgeologicalsurvey.gov. And a couple years ago, uh, he, he has them all documented. And then all of a sudden he went back and the statistics for all of the years had changed. And he goes, well, that's kind of odd. All of a sudden now he's got the pre-2019 you know, version and the post-2019 version that... It's almost like, I, I don't know what they really did there, but th they seem to have either updated or changed all the statistics, but you would think that, that would set, that's a little odd. I mean, any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, I'm grateful I've never written any books because I'm constantly learning more. <laughs> I would hate to, I can go to my website and fix it if I uh, found out I was wrong with something, or I get that, and a lot of people invest a lot of time in studying things, and like just the other day, you and I were, talking over email and one of these hot button topics about the uh, apostasy I had I had one view that I was like 99% settled on and then you sent me the explanation from uh, Lee I believe it was mm -hmm. and completely changed my point of view so that's one of the things that I think Christians should be able to do is to not like invest themselves so much in their understanding that they can never turn around <laughs> if they see new information that change it, you know, they're like, well, I didn't, I didn't realize that. It's good to be receptive and able to learn still, mm -hmm. but know exactly why you're defending your standpoint. So if somebody comes along and tells you something that you weren't quite aware of, um, you don't have to get angry or lash back at them. You can discuss it reasonably and kindly, and, and you do that very well. So I, I always appreciate that sort of Christ-like Christian. To me, it's... Uh... 
I find it interesting because, uh, you know, I'm a data guy, and I think as Christians, um, you hear different things, and again, brotherly, uh, t- again, brotherly d- disagreement. Um, but I remember reading that, again, we should be data-driven. The data will say what it is, and we shouldn't hide it or, or, or dismiss it or, or manufacture it. I remember there was an article probably in uh, 2008 or so, because uh, years ago I had done the same thing that you just described, um, wrote all the data down, went to the USGS, put it all in a chart, and you're like, okay. And they had an article on their website, which is no longer found. I wish I would have grabbed it, but it said, it was in response to a lot of the Christian, I think the Christian es- you know, eschatology people, earthquakes are increasing. And so they had a, a very specific article on there that said, earthquakes are not increasing. And, and, and just look at the data. Well then, <clears throat> so coming back to this conversation, uh, a couple hours ago, I decided to go on and, and look at the, and I grabbed all the data off the USGS just in case it disappears or changes. And so this is what I found today, uh, just, and I have it all in chart form, but from 1990 to 1999, so that decade, 10 years, um, I looked, I only looked at, at 5.0 earthquakes and above, and there were a total of 14,000 earthquakes in that decade, according to there. And then in 2000 to 2009, there were a total of 17,000, 5.0 and above, 17,221. And then in 2010 to 19, there were 17,980. And then just over the last couple of years, there were already 3,600. So I was like, okay, so does this show an increase at least over the last 32 years? Well, if you look at the averages for the 1990 decade, there were 1,476 per year, a 5.0 and above. And then in the next decade, it went to 1,772, which that's an increase. And then in 2010 to 19, there were 1,798 per year. And then in the last couple of years, it's up to 1,819 per year of 5.0 and above. So I know a lot of the statistics that people show are all earthquakes, like all the way down to 2.0. And I was like, you know what? Uh, I, won't, I won't use that. Jesus mentioned the word great earthquakes. And so this was just, you know, it took me about 30 minutes. And I thought, yeah. hey, guys, I'm looking at the data because there's a lot of articles out there by non-Christians who are calling us conspiracy theorists. And here's the data. And I'm like, OK, well, I looked at this one guy's data and I was like, well, he's saying that according to this big, long data, it's not there. I thought, well, I'll just do a fresh look. And this is what I found is that again, over the last 30 years, some people go all the way to 1900, but just over the last 30 years, it clearly went from 1,476 in that decade to over 1,800. So yeah. it's there. I, again, I'm not making it up. And that's including while seismographs have been in use. And if you want to go earlier than that, I mean, you can look at volcanism. and mm-hmm. Those are a lot more documented because people tend to take notice when a volcano goes off and record it. But I think a lot of people will immediately dismiss it and say, well, yeah, but we've only been monitoring them for so long, even though they really don't know how long or what the data is. But if you can show them a graph, it's like, there it is. What are you, mm-hmm. you going to do with that info? <laughs> yeah, because there is, you know, when you look at uh, one of the articles I saw in there was, and even on the USGS, it says right on there very clearly, uh, well, there's more seismographs now around the world. And it's like, okay, then... Uh, that's true, but there's no doubt, you go back to 1990, there's seismographs everywhere. This is the modern age. So the idea that, um, the, that there was somehow lost, the, a 5.0, that's why I was like, I'm only going to stick with the big ones. Uh, the fact that they missed it is, is highly suspect, honestly, um, that they would have uh, a missed, again, 5.0 or above, which is serious. I've, I've been in an earthquake 5.3, 5.7, actually, and man, that rocked my world. Um, mm. I mean, that was a big one. There was, it was unmistakable. So the idea that um, somehow the technology, there's no doubt that the technology is, is better, but that they were somehow missed and the data is skewed, I, I, I'm a little skeptical of that just dismissal. And that's just one of many things that we're watching for mm-hmm. that are increasing. And uh, that's another thing you can't forget is that these are terrible times. I think every Christian right now has quoted that verse every week. Um, it's tricky to talk to people because they are that way, as described in 2 Timothy yep. um, 3. It, it's not very easy, but if you can remain calm, and like even if you're talking to atheists, I, I have three sections of creation, and I've studied this stuff, and I love it because for me it's like when I see 
you know, the stars or how microorganisms work or genetics or epigenetics, all these things, the flagellum, they just, they blow my mind. It makes my faith, I feel like I'm seeing the evidence of God right in front of me. And I want to share all this, but if you, if you meet an atheist and try talking about this stuff with them, all they want to do for the most part is argue. And I started, this is what I meant about being more effective. I started um, trying to get to the root of the problem. And with atheists, it's almost always anger. Mm. So I stopped talking about <laughs> all the creation versus evolution stuff and started talking about, you know, why, if God was real, what is it that you don't like about mm -hmm. it? And try to let him know, you know, God is actually love and he does love you. And he says all these things for your benefit. So the quicker I can get to Jesus, the better. I've heard people like yourselves, pastors say that, but how true it is when you actually go out there to actively practice and find out what's effective. That's the salvation section alone. I was trying to talk to these people who thought they could lose their salvation or, you know, really need to repent hard enough to get saved. And every time I tried talking to them, I kept on changing it a little more and changing it a little more until it finally started to open people. Like it seemed to be more effective. Mm -hmm. And then I stuck it on the website. Yeah, I, I, this is this is awesome because again, you know, it has been written dot com where uh, Sean has. Uh, again, many different categories of, of again creation versus evolution, archaeology, uh, signs of the time, salvation issues. I mean, uh, and again, from an apologetics perspective, and if you're looking to be equipped or you're looking to point people to an easy reference, <clears throat> again, pick the thing that interests you. I think uh, you know one of the things that you and I we have similarity also is you're into astronomy. You have you have a very large 14-inch Mead telescope in the southern hemisphere, which is great and awesome. Uh, kind of talk about how, how you got into astronomy. Well, it was through apologetics. Uh, it was actually the Spike Saris videos. He has three of them, What You're Not Being Told About Astronomy. Um, and the pictures in there were beautiful. And just his, his explanation, he was an astrophysicist who became a Christian through being honest. And it seems to always be the way. He hears one paradigm and then he sees things like they sent a spacecraft past a few of the planets and they're like, well, evolution says that the magnetic field should be this way, but maybe it was flipping right as the spacecraft went past it. And so they get to the next planet and they said evolution says it should be like this. And as they get past that, like, well, maybe that one's also flipping. And we just passed them both when they were both flipping. <laughs> and he just starts pointing out all these little details. It's just mind-blowing and when you understand more about things the more you appreciate them um so i got this telescope but it couldn't point to it and if you've ever pointed a manual telescope at a star you constantly have to keep on moving it to keep up with it i got a hold of this gigantic telescope that didn't work so i had never used a computer telescope before so first i had to fix it and then i had to get it going but the thing is awesome yeah, no, that it, that's to me. It's incredible to <laughs> just see that the the sure scale. I mean, uh, we're just getting ready to finalize our observatory, and um, uh, the stuff just got shipped. So I'm super excited to get the mounts, uh, the telescope there. Ours is a 12.5. You have a 14. So just the the idea of being able to have 12 to 14 inches of aperture uh, as yeah. a, as an amateur is is, is incredible. Well, you'll have your Southern Hemisphere telescope now. I know. I, I, I'm excited to have you uh, do some astrophotography for us and, and, and send us the data so we can have a... Because we're, we're getting ready to... Our goal is to do a variety of things as it relates to publishing certainly some images, but it'd be great to have stuff from the Southern Hemisphere that obviously we can't see from here. My scope is your scope. Oh, that's a great answer and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and vice versa. Well, I want to read a passage of Scripture because... Um, you know, we've been talking about the end times. We've been talking about, again, your particular website, which is very helpful for pointing people in a very um, non-threatening way, but that's based on data. And I want to read a passage here, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, which is a great passage for all of us to, be, to get some perspective. And Paul says this, chapter 3, verse 1, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, the lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, 
treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They will have the appearance of godliness, but they will deny its power. Avoid such people. And so this is a, um, you know, this is a very extensive list talking about, I think, the last days of the last days. Um, how has this particular passage influenced you and your ministry? It's made me, well, I'll tell you what, I have my wallet right here because I had it printed in it. It was basically the opposite of that verse, which says, it's 2 Peter uh, 1, 5 through 8. Make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. I put that in my wallet because I need the reminder. <laughs> and It's pretty easy to get upset. It's easy to get defensive. Um, often people will do what they call ad hominem, which is like they had start attacking, attacking the character of whoever you're talking about or... Or they'll do the opposite of that, which is called ad rem, and they start talking about how good this person's character is. And they've gotten off the data, and you need to just constantly bring it back to the data, stay kind. And first and foremost, you just you have to be a representative of all the things we love about Jesus, which is patience, mercy, grace, love. And it really it catches them off guard. They're expecting you to butt heads. They're expecting you to argue even if they don't listen to you in that moment, they're going to remember the conversation. And like, you know, that guy didn't try taking my head off. He was nice. He was kind. And all he wanted to let me know is that I am actually loved and more important than I think. It, it is so true. And I think, uh, you know, the, the challenge and it really, the, I would say the opportunity is um, as I've kind of got thrust you know, from pastoral uh, opportunities and, and, and being able to pastor in the churches, it was a great training ground because, um, honestly, learning how to be a referee often amongst the different viewpoints within the holding people in the church, um, in the sense of encouraging them to always default back. Again, Second uh, Peter one's a great passage. I would default them back always to First Corinthians thirteen. You can have all knowledge of all prophecies, but if you don't have love, you are nothing. I mean, yeah. and, and say, hey, if you can't get love figured out, then. It doesn't matter how much how you can be an expert on everything, but if you haven't figured it out, you're not spiritually mature. And so, coming into the prophecy world, there there, there is there is a uh, sadly there is sometimes this uh, acrimony that uh, different different perspectives, people fighting each other, again ad hominem attacks or or you know uh, being unloving and uncharitable. And it's like, hey guys, we're all on the same team. We all love Jesus. Uh, yeah. You know, now again, if you start telling me that Jesus isn't the Savior, well, then I, I might bring up my level of sharpness. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but we're yeah. not there. I'm going to be with you for eternity, and uh, we we all see through a, da a glass darkly, as First Corinthians 13 that passage also says. But um, we can have, or we should be able to have, these minor differences on these secondary or tertiary issues, but still be completely loving and kind. Yeah, nobody nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care, as they say, and that makes a huge difference. Facebook, for example. If Christians can't be nice to each other, what hope do we have? Like, we're not going to get very far. If And I I know what it feels like. If you, you go and you make a comment on Facebook, you're trying to talk about Jesus or somebody like tears India, and it could even be a family member, it, it'll upset me for like a good day and you need to just process that. Go listen to some nice Christian music or read the Bible and just and don't respond until you're a representative of love. Yeah. And it's good practice. It's The internet is a crazy place, but it is good practice to control yourself. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, hey, brother, I, I appreciate that because, you know, even, you know, your website is dedicated to, again, a variety of apologetics. And I think of First Peter 3.15, you know, sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Well, that's start there. That's you're sanctifying the Lord Jesus in your heart. You know, you're setting him apart and you're recognizing I want to be like him. And and then, you know what? Always be ready to give an answer, to give a defense for the reason of the hope that we have with what? 
with gentleness and respect. And yeah. there's no doubt that as we go, not only within the household of faith, but outside of it, people should see us as, man, I, I really don't like what that guy's saying, but I really like that guy. You know, I, th that's, that's what I want is they don't necessarily have to like what I say because I'm just a messenger, but, you know, and I'm not looking for them to like me necessarily, but they're like, wow, it's, it's hard for me to be angry at that guy because he's saying those things with grace and kindness. Yeah, and I grew up in the Bible Belt, right? So I'm used to being able to talk about this stuff, and it's not weird. I came out here, and it's a different, <laughs> you know. I'm, I'm in a very secular world, and um, I am definitely not the norm. So that alone, it teaches you how to kind of be a, a sheep amongst wolves. And um, I don't want people to ever think that I'm like some judgy person. I want them to know that I think of them better than myself. You know, like we all just because their sin is more obvious or something doesn't mean that I don't have it. I, you know, we all are sinners and we got, we got to be nice to each other. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I've learned. Like ever since I started this website thing, if there's one problem that I want, if I came on this show, what I wanted to talk about was yeah. being kind, being effective, having an answer. And my site is your site. It's, I don't get any money or anything. I just want people to have access to notes that are kind of hard to find yeah amen well as as always i think of uh you know the goal is to be like jesus and jesus was humble and uh you know throughout my life is the goal uh, you can never have too much humility and i think that's one of the keys of being a, a christian is humility and love and and certainly obedience and a person of faith but uh sean i really appreciate you coming on all the way from australia uh, it has been written.com and um, what, I, what I really would love to do is, um, is uh, get your permission to share the other video that uh, I thought was very well done, and, and hopefully we can put that on our site. Absolutely. Share away. Awesome, man. Well, hey, brother, appreciate you uh, coming on, and uh, I, I know we'll chat again. And for those watching, uh, again, it has been written.com. You, you will find a lot of excellent material there, apologetic material done, and again, in a spirit of kindness and gentleness and humility, which certainly honors the Lord. Um, videos, uh, data, graphs, uh, a whole bunch of other things. Again, 10 years plus in the making. And again, uh, to the point of where it's been clarified and fine-tuned, again, for us to continue to get the gospel out, which is why we're here. Uh, prophecy is a great way to get the gospel out, but so are some of these other uh, categories of apologetics. So appreciate you watching today in this update. Again, earthquakes are on the rise. You can look at the data yourself at U.S. Geological Survey, amongst many other things. So appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.